enable security. I'll walk you through the lab now. So we'll go ahead and do the lab now. Um, we're gonna stay closed. Make sure that we share screen. Okay, so we are going to do a few exercises on passive and active uh, footprinting. The first part is going to be, um, we're going to go ahead and download Kali. And while we wait for it to unzip, we're going to do the Google exercise. Okay. So we talked about footprinting. Footprinting is going to help us identify the vulnerabilities that we need. And with that, we will be able to identify targets. So I have put down the steps on how you can footprint. So we need to identify the target that we're going to be footprinting. We're going to gather as much information as we can, right? Make sure we have accurate results. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and plan the attack. Okay. So to download Kali, you are going to go to this website. So if you hold down your control key and put your cursor on the link, you can you can click it and it's gonna take you to get Kali virtual machine. You're gonna click this arrow down button right here to download, right? So from this document, just put your cursor on the link like this and hold down the control key and click it. It's gonna take you to the website which is this. And you don't want the weekly one because the weekly one is their, their shorter bill. You want this one. So click this one to download. And as I click it, you need to make sure that you make sure that it's safe or it's save as, and you can put it into your downloads or on your desktop. Downloads is probably the best. Okay, so make sure that we save it because if you open it, it's not gonna let you play or access the file because it's a zip file. So make sure that we do save as and put it onto downloads. So as I click that, right, it's gonna let me save it. And I already have one saved, okay? That's gonna take a few minutes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and extract it. So after you download it, you are gonna go ahead and open up your folder. You're gonna go to downloads and you would see this. So you see a little folder that would say Kali Linux 2023.4 virtual box. We're gonna go ahead and extract it. So right click, show more option, seven zip, and we're gonna extract files. You want to choose extract files because it's gonna unpack the folder exactly in the same location instead of throwing the files there. So what we're doing here is after we download, we're gonna do step four, go to your downloads folder where, or where you save your file that you downloaded or your folder, right click, show more options, 7-zip and extract files. If you took 27, we did the same thing in that class the first day along with the 41A, the same thing, right? Extract files. So when you select extract files, this pop up and it's from 7-zip. Zip. So at home, if you do this, you just use your OS extraction tool. You just do extract all for, for Windows, Right, And if you're running Mac OS with VirtualBox, you can just right click and choose extract. So here we're gonna go ahead and click okay. It's gonna do its thing for a few minutes. And notice that it's, it's gonna have this folder available once it's done. So we gotta wait till the bar is full for the full extraction. 
So before I can run Kali, I basically need to download the virtual machine. I have to have a player, which is a virtual box app. And then I need to be able to extract it so that way I can play it. Okay. But before we go into an and and play this, we're gonna kind of read this a little bit. Actually, it's done already. So our I'm already extracting this. So I just open up the folder, double click, open up its subfolder, and you would see two things. One is gonna be the virtual box file. That's where the virtual machine is. Um, and then the VDI is the storage of that virtual machine. So you're gonna double click the blue the blue icon, double click that, and it's gonna open up your virtual box with it, and you're gonna click start. At home, you might not have this application, so you need to install it, okay? From Oracle VirtualBox, you can just download it, it's free. So click start once that this pops up. Now, if you have an issue here, it's because you didn't open the extracted folder, you open the zip folder, that's the problem. Any question? Okay. All right, so first we're gonna do some Google dorking. We are gonna use the Chrome browser and we're gonna do a passive footprinting, okay? So on this, this one, you can just use your Chrome on your desktop. You don't have to use it in the virtual machine. We're just gonna boot the virtual machine for the next exercise. So for step nine through 13 or 14, you can just use your computer browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the browser and I'm gonna search for, so my target right now, if you read, is Nmap. Right, that's I chose that to be my target. That might be something that I want to focus on and do a lot of footprinting. So for this exercise, I chose Nmap. Right, for your 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 career, it might be the you know whatever that you your goal is gonna be could be a company, a person. So our goal right now is to find as much information on Nmap as possible. So open up your Chrome, get another tab, and then in Google. It tells you here to go ahead and put in the exact thing right here. In title, colon, and map scan. <coughs> so we're using advanced search operator. So we're gonna do an in title, right? And map scan. Click the plus sign to open the tab. And once you insert that, just press enter or click search. And it's gonna give you the results here. As you notice that when we say in title and map scan, we want the end map scan to be part of the, the, the page title, okay? So what we want is we want to be able to look for information that would contain, right? And map and scan in the title. Okay, so when you get to that part, after you get your result, you're gonna take a screenshot. I don't need you to take the whole thing, just be able to get the top part is okay. So open snippet, so search for snip, and then click new, and then just take a screenshot. This is really for you to 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 down the line to kind of look at, oh, if I use this operator, what would it look like? And then go to that step and then paste it. So after I snip, I'm gonna do a paste, right? So to use snip, you just search for snip and this pops up. Let me redo it. So I search for snip. And this little tool pop up, right? I'm gonna go ahead and click new and hold down my left button and drag so I can snip that part of the page, right? I just need to, 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 to take a screenshot of this so I can just snip out and, and drag it. So snip, I know it's repetitive, but I show it to you and then you know how to do it. And then drag. 
So when in Windows, when you when you do a screenshot, you have to paste it. So go to your your lab document and paste it under that step, right? So just right click and then right click and then you just click the 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 clipboard to paste. So it will be like this. I just need to size it down so that way it fits on the page. As long as I have an image, it's good. So what kind of search are being displayed? What does the title con contain, right? We know that the search is being displayed is pertaining to Nmap, right? That's that's what we use as the operator and, and scan, Nmap scan. So it gives you the page from Nmap and the title contains scan. Okay, because remember the criteria that we gave Google in the search was we want it in the title and map scan. So if you're looking for like, for example, nike.com, but you want to look for like certain things because they have pages that would focus on like shoes or athletics or whatever, we can add it to the operator using it this way. Okay. So here I'm using an in-title operator. So the title would contain either scan or nmap or both, right? And then you would see, go down and look to see if they, how many links actually have some kind of uh, files. If you don't find anything, you can click none, okay? It's really interesting to me that when I search for this at home, I'm getting different hits, like, you know, but. <laughs> so if you're able to find things that it would say like PDF or files or whatever, that will be good. So if you scroll down and see if you have any kind of files, if you don't see anything, put none. So right now, what I did was I'm answering C. Because why would I care about the files? Well, sometimes company would publish some kind of files on their website that might be, that would contain useful information to me. For example, like let's say that I'm, I'm, I'm looking to attack a company that would have some kind of special products their design of that product or their information about the research about that product might be published in a PDF or a document or something somewhere, right? You can also do file type operator and so on. All right, if you find some information on that, you can put, you know, if there are files, then put. So scroll down a little bit and look. And then when, when I look at the first link coming back to the top, yeah, not the not the ad. Okay. The actual link is the quick port. So this page gives me the tutorial for it. And the tutorial is actually part of the book. So you can just say that, oh, it's a port scanning tutorial page for from Nmap. Just say does the title. But anyway, for number 10, we're gonna do an all in text and map scan. So go back to the Google so we can open up Google again or click back. And instead of the in title, we're just gonna place all in text. We're gonna replace it with all in text. So that means that we are searching for Nmap scan in the content of the text from the site. So you can just click search. Now, sometimes you would have similar hits for the results. Sometimes it depends on, you know, the type of, of, of search that you're looking for. So here, right? Do your best in comparing it. So how do, how do the search result different from the previous steps? 
if you're getting different links, so in my opinion, um, you do get some additional like blogs or different type of websites that gets added because they might have mentioned Nmap in their blogs or on their page or something like that. So all in text kind of give you affiliated websites, but not necessarily in the title. Usually the in title is pertaining to that particular company or organization. Okay, so any kind of mention of Nmap would be added, would be shown here. So you would see other companies had done tutorials or other website had provided tutorials or videos or any kind of text information that would be included on their page. Text target might have an article on it. You see what I mean? And then we would have some videos up here, right? That had mentioned because it's searching by the tag. So it's showing some kind of Nmap scan information. So does the title contain Nmap scan? So you can take a look. Some of them do and some of them don't, right? Like the, these two are, but this one don't, doesn't. But the, the text, the description, the, the text ain't on the page actually contain Nmap scan because what you did was you use the operator call all in text. So it's looking for the the keywords here, the search words on the text content of the page. So if you get into like website development, right, you want all of these operators. You want to target that rank when you build out your website and then you're, you're going to do the search engine optimization. So this allows us to kind of have different results so that way we can correlate later. And as you do this, right, you want to make notes of the hits that. So you got to click on the link and then read what it is and so on and so on. And then you want to see if there are any kind of files that pop up. So if you can find some various link that would provide you with files that you, you want to make note of it. Okay. okay. Then we're going to click on the first link again. Because, you know, that page probably is the closest. So it gives that to us first. And it probably have SEO integrated well. So coming back to the top. And then, um, again, it's the same. It's the same, right? The tutorial was provided in the last one for the in title. And then you would see the same thing. So we just finished 10. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, so the difference between your output for all in text and in title is the hits, the result for the in title, it's going to find the end map and, and scan or both, right? Or scan um, in the title itself. Like, you know how each page have a title? Yeah, it's going to look for that. But whereas the all in text, is actually in the content. So someone might have put an, a, a blog that says, oh, you know, we have practiced using Nmap scan this last week. So, it, and the title would be different. It, it, it might say, you know, network network monitoring or something like that, right? It, so the all in text, it's somewhere in the content, in the text of the web page, whereas the in title, it's actually on the title of the page that it's searching for. Uh -huh.
yeah, you're going to see that it's very close because, you know, so, but the whole point in this is to kind of get you to have a variation of the results so that way you can find additional information about that particular target. Then what we're going to do is we are going to actually search for the site using site operator. So once you're here, click back. And then we're going to go ahead and do a site and map.org. And then what you see is, of course, it's going to serve us the actual website, right? And map.org and map.org. But you notice that it's going to give you a lot of different related things to nmap.org. Okay right? Like they have additional extensions to it where you would see that they added presentations, uh, some additional page for library and driver. So when you visit the site, what you would see is, oh, there are some images. So they have a location. This is really useful. You know why? Because this is where they store, that's the directory where they store their things on the on, for the, the site, right? Like I know that there are images that are linked to it. So it tells you here that there's a parent directory that would contain some information for the images. Remember, we're just looking for breadcrumbs to kind of find some information. So now I would know the location for that. Uh, there's some release notes information. So this gives you a little bit of different hits. And then there's data, right? So site is a really useful operator to use. Okay. So with that, are all the results containing mmap.org? So look at, I don't want to say you can't, you don't have to look through all of them, right? Just the majority of it. What do you think? Yeah. Yes, because that's the parameter that you put for that operator. So yes. In the search results, how many entries contain images and video and media? Give me a rough estimate after a couple of scroll, right? You know, I don't expect you to go through all of them because that could be days, right? But if this is your job, you go through, okay? And who says? So after some of these classes, you tell me you still want to stick with security. <laughs> if you you have to love it, okay, and you have to be patient, and this can be very fun. So think of it like treasure hunt, okay? That's the way I look at things. Is oh, what else can I find? Every time I find something, I give myself a point. Treasure hunt, and that can you know kind of cheer you up and keep you going, right? <laughs> okay so one more point that we found some some you know structure to the site then what we're going to do is we are going to source it to its affiliates right i know that rapid seven they support and map quite a bit they mention a lot of things um but this might be some homework that you have to do okay so if you're researching a company, you're like, okay, who could be its affiliates? Or an individual, who could be in its affiliates? That's pretty easy to find, actually. You can find who's who, basically just Google search, right? So we're going to do an Nmap source, uh, and we want to source. So the, the source is going to be Nmap and who's going to be affiliated with, which is Rapid7. So we're going to go ahead and paste that. So now it's going to serve you the result for Rapid7 or things that are related to Nmap and Rapid7. Like, for example, they might have a comparison article or even, a, you know, some kind of comments on Reddit or some kind of post on Reddit and so on. So you have some information from other organization or even Rapid7 themselves. 
But you notice that very, you, you don't really see Nmap no longer, right? You would just see mentionable things about Nmap. So the source is going to be Nmap, but mostly related to Rapid7. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take, take a screenshot. So you can use Snip, right? Open up that page, click New, and then cut it. Paste it into the lab. What type of websites are displaying the results? You can say mostly Rapid7 websites, blogs, or you know articles or whatever, if you can determine that. And other websites that have mentioned and map and Rapid7. Then we're going to come back. And then we're going to go ahead and go back up to the first hit. And we're going to click the first one. So this is a blog post. Right? And you notice that it does mention Nmap, right? So when it's not, this is another way that you can find the text within, but some of it can be from a discussion thread. It could be a... Uh, it could be from a blog. It could be from, you know, different type of platform instead of just like, you know, the main uh, target website. So this would be considered the first level, right? Because you're at Nmap and now you move out a little bit on like who's connected to it, who's who has affiliated information by using the source. So you would put your target here and the source into the affiliates. And then now we're gonna do a URL, the in URL. So when you enter in URL and map into the search bar, you are going to get the hits for the nmap that is not necessarily just nmap.org, but it would be tied to the link. Right, you notice there's some coding camp and then others that would post tutorial guide. Kali Linux have Nmap. So in URL is also a useful operator for it to use, for us to use. And then it asks you, is this is the result the same or, from, and or different than the previous step? It should be different from the last step because we're using different operator and criteria right so you can compare we're going to go ahead and click on the first link and this is for practice only right down the line you're going to have to access some of the links to kind of read the content so the first link it takes you to nmap right download page or nmap.org main page, I should say main page. Any questions? So for the Google portion, right, you, you can, uh, the simple thing that you can do if you don't know, right, you just Google it. So you can say advanced search operators, uh, you know, in search engine or something like that. But even if you do that, you can, you find like a bunch of different companies that will list like different type of operators you can use. So you can find the search operators. So I just want you to have a little bit of a taste on how to kind of go through and do the passive ones. And then for the social media, right, without going into people's specific profile, I'm not doing that exercise. 
but you are welcome to, you know, we'll talk about the Multego tool, tool later. We'll use a target account and, and be able to do that. Next, we're gonna do Nmap itself. So in Kali Linux, and Kali Linux comes with Nmap. If you're using another Linux release, you can install it. This is part of the active footprinting. Um, now on the Windows side, we can use Zenmap where you can install it for Windows, but Nmap is in Linux. And here I put down some of the things that, that kind of overview the purpose of Nmap. It is a port scanner, a network discoverer, um, and it detects OS. It detects services. You can have it scripted uh, for automation. You don't have to run it manually every time. Uh, it has an API, which you can write, you can integrate it into your Python script. This is why Python is so cool for, for um, cybersecurity. So coming back here, you would see the, the virtual box with the icon here. Just click on it and you're coming back to the Kali that you booted earlier. Our username is going to be Kali and the the password is the same. Okay. Then always we want to. So at first when I wrote this, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just going to let them use Nmap. But I'm like, no, why am I stopping there? I need to let them run vulnerable web apps so they can see all the services. <laughs> and then, you know, I went down the rabbit hole, you know, if I didn't have to like finish it up and give it to you or like thinking about like the amount of time that you have, it's probably would have like 200 steps. But anyway, <laughs> we'll save some of the other stuff for later. Okay. So you're going to click on this black little box, square box icon. That's going to be your terminal. It's a command line in Linux. So here is your terminal emulator. You're going to open it. Okay. And I'm going to go through each step and... As I do that, we'll take a look at this right here. I think it's control all plus to zoom in. Let me see if I can still. Tap layout, full screen, scroll bar. I'm trying to make it a little bigger, but. Maybe not, I'm remembering my commands long. Okay, so after we, we have it open, we're gonna do an update because we're gonna install some things. So always good to start your Linux box and then if you're gonna install software, run its update. So sudo apt-get update and then input your password. Remember that Linux machines, when you type passwords, it for in the terminal the, the cursor doesn't change right it doesn't move the space or or you know blink even that's a windows thing so just type and press enter if you type wrong it's going to prompt you to type again okay so as i as i ask for it to update it's going to prompt me with the password because now you you log in as a regular user which is Kali and you're trying to run updates as a root user or a super user, I should say a super user. So that's why you're using sudo here. So it's gonna to wanna to make sure that you authenticate for that. So that's why it asks you to re-authenticate by the password. Okay, make sure that we type command exactly like how it's supposed to be. Otherwise you're gonna get an error if you get an error, you just need to redo it, okay? All right, next we're gonna find the IP address. So we're gonna do IP address. And we are gonna record two addresses. The loopback, which is in purple here, which is your INET address. 
right? That's a loopback address that's going to come back to itself. That's how it's able to ping itself. And then the INET address, which is here. So what is the IP address of the system? 127.0.0.1 and 10.0.2.15. I think now when they make the Kali machine, it's always going to be the this IP, right? Which is great because it doesn't acquire the, D, the DHCP IPR update. Okay, so when we find the IP address, there are two. The version four is the INET one, that's your loopback address, and then go down and under F0, this is your interface, you're gonna see the 10.0.2.15. That's your actual IP address for your system. All system has a loopback address. What If it's a network system, it has a loopback address, okay? And then the the other, uh, if it has version, uh, if it has version six, it would have something like this. This is a broadcast, right? That's for a different class. <laughs> all right. So next, we're gonna install all the service. It's called Damn Vulnerable Web App. This is really good for practice. So I designed this so that way, if you replicate it at home, you can run your web server on your same machine and you will just attack it, right? With a web app that doesn't have any kind of security, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna use a thing called DVWA, Damn Vulnerable Web App. This is what it's named. And it contains some of the application uh, features that is not secure, right? So, as you go through step 20, it's going to tell you to install this. The reason why we do this so it's fun. Otherwise, you're going to be like, oh, my, my computer doesn't have anything that's like, like that's open, right? Uh, I wanted to kind of open it up a little bit so that way you can see, oh, okay. You know, and then we're going to use Nikto to scan it. Okay, so sudo app get install, and you can copy and paste the command into Kali from your Word document if you like, DVWA, because it has that capability. So as I'm installing these packages, it says, hey, it's gonna take up this space, are you sure? We're gonna type Y for yes, and press enter. It's gonna take a couple, a minute or so to install. Very easy. You know what I forgot to tell you to do here. I meant to put this, but all right. Anyway, it's cool. I have to edit. Okay, so once it's done, it's going to pop up a window. It's going to say, this is the website, right? Um, or actually, we have to start it. So after step 22, you're going to see it. So now we install the D DVWA. This is really good for practice. If you want to attack, you know, a high vulnerable, highly vulnerable web application. Okay, so DVWA dash start no space okay and it's gonna say hey who are you and then we're just gonna type in cali for authentication and there it goes so you notice that your loopback address is here right so now we're hosting this on our on our computer and it already have a bunch of things. Um, we'll use this down the line. I just wanted to show you day one on how you can install it. There are features on it. You can find tutorial for DVWA everywhere. Uh, this has been around for years. So this is a really good platform for practice. Okay, now, right, my terminal kind of got overlay with this. And you notice there's a port number following the colon here, colon there. So what we're gonna do is we are going to also 
install. I forgot to add the set for you to open up your terminal. You guys remember what the how to open up your terminal? Control Alt D. Thank you. Oh, T. I'm sorry. Control Alt D is something else. <laughs> so you can click it right, or you can use Control Alt T together. Right, just click it or open up. So open it back up. And then, of course, don't forget to do the screenshot for number 23 after you start it. We're also going to do web services. So for a Linux server, in order to, to be a web server, it needs to run Apache. In Windows environment, it runs IIS. Okay. So Apache 2 is the, the current version. So whenever that you, you scan and you see Apache, you know that that system is running web services, okay? And you wanna look at the Apache version because the older version is the vulnerable version, right? So you wanna research that version. So we're gonna do sudo service Apache to start. Do the step, April. Now, Kali Linux or Debian Linux mostly come with Apache already installed. Some releases of Linux doesn't have it, so you have to download and install it, okay? Just like how we do sudo app get install and you just say Apache 2, right? It's already installed, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on that service. And then it's going to ask us for the password. Kali, just type in. Nothing really happens there. It's in the background. What it does is it turns on the web services for you. Okay. So web services, now we are a web server, right? We enable that service and we have the web app things running. Okay. So we just did 24. I started the, the web services. Then what we're going to do next is before, when you're using a new tool, you always want to get to the help page of that tool in Linux. So you're going to do an nmap-help. And what it does is it's going to list all the option for that command that will be useful to you. And Nmap is pretty thorough, so they list a lot of different options. Some other tools might only have some of the primary ones, and then you can read their documentation or uh, use the get started feature to, to get more information. So scroll down and read some of the option. It asks you, which option can be used with the nmap command to enable OS detection? So go down, right? And sometimes they change the option too when they update the, the program or the code. So it's always good to, to look, okay? There are several ways that you can actually find OS information, okay? You can do an aggressive scan. You can also use, um, I believe, yeah, there's aggressive scan is the capital A. So dash capital A is an aggressive scan. Aggressive scan, definitely they see you, okay? So that allows OS detection. There's also another option is a dash capital O, right? So you can go through it and take a look. I don't expect you to go through every single one of them, but kind of scheme through and answer the question. So here you can put, you know, it's, you can also use lowercase s with a capital V. You see some of that later. This is for aggressive. And then to display the version number, I think it's at the bottom. Yeah. So the capital V is going to display the version number. 
the lowercase v v always remember the lowercase v is called verbose whenever that you hear the term verbose mean what a lot of text information right you can go home and if one of your family members like they talk a lot you can say you're very verbose <laughs> i say that to my husband all the time <laughs> but anyways so v capital v is the the version number and the lowercase v is for robo. So when you see something like this, we want to show all the steps and the details in text, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scan ourselves first, okay? So I'm gonna scroll this up. I'm gonna do step, oh, sorry, I messed that up. That should be step 27, but it's part of 26 now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an end map for both, so lowercase v, and we are gonna do an aggressive scan, so dash capital A, dash lowercase v, space, dash capital A, and then we're going to enter our IP address 10.0.2.15. That was what we recorded earlier. And we're going to press enter. So with verbose, you're going to see, you know, each of the step or each of the tasks that it's doing. And some of you have used Nmap before in other classes, right? 27 is one of them. So you have to kind of scroll up. Now, if you don't put the verbose, it's going to give you the summarized version. So it tells you how many scripts are scanned. NSE are like they are specific script for a certain purpose. And then you, they do a ping scan. There's a DNS resolution, right? And so on. So you notice that it tells me here that I have a server header, right? That's because I'm running Apache. It tells me the version of Apache here. These are the number of ports that are closed, so you can answer that question. So look at the output information, which port is open, right? We open that up because we hosted the, we hosted the web, right? And even it gives the page, the title page. So go through and write down the information. Are you doing this as well? Okay. So it tells you how many ports are scanned, what port is being discovered, and then at the end, it's gonna tell you more information about that open port or near the end, I should say. Okay, now you can also scan a series or a range of IP, right? Your target is always gonna be following your option but you can also add more, right? Like, or you can even do URL. You don't have to put in IP addresses. We're gonna do some of the URL later, right? So that, what was the last step? And anytime that you need to repeat the command, just a up arrow key and then forward the command is the down arrow key, okay? So you don't have to retype. All right, so the next one, we're gonna, after you answer this question, we're gonna do a SYN scan. Okay, question? Okay, now you notice that when, 
So you learn sin act probably in, in other classes or you learning that this semester. Whenever that there, there are, you know, in TCP, it needs to make sure that things are acknowledged when when things are sent, right? Uh, for example, before it sends, it's gonna say, Hey, are you ready? And then the, the system, you know, the, the other system will say, oh, okay, yeah, I'm ready. Now send. So there's there's request and acknowledgement for the communication for TCP connection. So whenever that you see SYN scan, that's always going to be pertaining to TCP. Okay, that is a protocol that the system use for connection. Everything that we use is mostly UDP and TCP these days. So we're going to do a pseudo. The reason why we have to do a pseudo on some of them is because you need higher privilege to do a certain scan, right? Because at the low level, it's going to require, because we're using the interface a certain way for the ethernet. So we have to do a pseudo, all right? So dash locate s uppercase s and then our IP address 10.0.2.15. And this one is pretty quick, right? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. My keyboard was pressed. Um, so it tells me that for this the and in here I mentioned that you know it needs root privileges or super user privilege. And this is quick and stealthy. So if you want to do something fast to see what port is open, SYN scan is the best for NMAP, okay? Now we're gonna switch gear and we're gonna scan a website. The same scan, but we're gonna target a different target now. We're gonna do scanme.nmap.org. So I'm going to do a dash, lowercase s, and an uppercase s, and I'm going to use a different target. Because I want to, you to see the difference between having a live hosted website versus your local system, which is very quick and easy. Scanme.nmap.org. This is going to take a few minutes depending also on your connection and how the server responds. Sometimes if the website have a lot of security mechanism, you cannot, you know, it would block this. For example, you can try Facebook and, and other things, right? Um, it, it is invasive and Facebook will track, right? We don't want to floor them. But anyway, what you would see is that when it might take a, a, a few minutes, Right, this is fairly fast, it's responding. It tells you which ports are open. So after you do this, you just take a screenshot, okay? Notice that I didn't do a verbose, right? It's give you the summary here, which is sweet and short, short and sweet. It tells me the open ports. But if you do the aggressive, it's a little longer. Okay, that's going to take minutes. All right. And the reason why we're scanning this website is because they allow us to scan. Some websites, you know, they would they put this up for us to scan. So next, we're going to do a SYN scan. Oh, it tells you here that if it's if SYN, if TCP is unavailable, what you can do is you can do another scan using ST, which is, um, it is a little bit slower. So I just up arrow key and then I go and move, use the left arrow and change up my option and then press enter. So you're gonna notice that this is a little bit, you know, less efficient, but usually it's responding the same way. So how many ports are open? Same as the last one, right? One, two, three, four. You just count these. So 
So SSH, HTTP, so web services, right? Secure shell. You guys know what secure shell is used for? What secure shell used for? It took networking already. You should know this, right? SSH is a way that we can remotely connect or terminal into something as well, right? So it's a way to connect and ping echo. Okay. So we found the information from using ST scan. Take a screenshot, answer the, 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 the question, how many ports are open? Now we're going to do, so there's a way that you can do multiple type of scans. So if you wanted to do an SY with an ST, right? Like, or you can do a UDP with an ST scan. You just need to add some of them. Like you can add the options next to it. I didn't, I didn't do this one down the line. I didn't combine them because it might take a little bit of time and you're going to get the same result. Okay. So now we're going to do an SY option, but we're going to do it in verbose. So here it tells you that when you do SC, uh, SCTP combines architecture, that's TCP and UDP. Normally they do this for, you know, fast resolution of traffic to avoid and to avoid flooding. So this is for network administration purposes. So as you see with the SYN scan, you can also do the SCTP scan and it is stealthy and you use the SY option. So up arrow key, move your cursor by using your left arrow and take out the T and replace it with the capital Y and press enter, right? You can write a script to automate the scan so you don't have to retype the command over and over again. <laughs> So that will save you a lot of time as well, right? So on this one, it shows that you are scanning 52 ports instead of earlier, you would see that it is, um, could be specific ports. Oh, did I say that we're gonna do verbose? So I'm sorry, we are gonna do add a B. So you can, a lowercase V. If you do verbose, it's gonna track line each task. So that might be a little bit of time. Okay. So just more text display. It tells you the type of scan it's performing at that moment in time. And then overall, you have this many ports that were scanned. It tells you the address of your target. And then the, their affiliated addresses. This is important, right? We talked about that earlier. And then how many raw packets were sent for your scan? So how many ports were scanned and how many packets were sent? Then we're only gonna focus on UDP now, right? UDP doesn't need confirmation, it just sends. And for all websites, like if you're looking at, you know, the, the ones that you normally use, TCP and UDP are usually at work. So what we're going to do is we are going to verbose. And you don't have to use sudo. So I'm just going to, sorry. I'll just type this one. nmap verbose dash su, lowercase s, uppercase u, scan me dot nmap dot org. Okay. Sorry, that might be a pseudo as well. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. I forgot to put pseudo for you guys here. I need to fix this. So when you see the error, when it tells you that it needs root privilege, just add the pseudo. So for the UDP, you need pseudo. All, all the protocol scan, like the TCP, the SU, the ST, the, the SY, just use pseudo. So you notice that when you scan with UDP, it tells you that it's four specific ports, right? 
um and then one host of course because we have that target it is a little slower than your other scans and it is not as stealthy as the other scan so as it's doing the probe now you sometime if this take well it depends um when i when i tested it earlier today just to make sure um and also last night the 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 send delay is long okay so we might have to cancel just to move on to the next part and to cancel in linux you press control and c together but i let this ran earlier um and you can test it with your ip address it took a good amount of minutes okay so you can still answer the question though right it asks you to take a screenshot so take a screenshot and how many ports are scanned it's already here so four Okay. So we're going to cancel so I can move on. So control C. This is only, it's less than 50%, like a few minutes in. But if you, you know, you need to give it time. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we are going to... Oh, you can skip 31. I meant to add the, it's going to take a while. So don't, you don't have to do 21. Or did we do that? Oh yeah, we did do that 31, sorry, 31. Next, we're going to do the SV. So we're going to do verbose SV. So that is going to be, um, this is really useful. It's gonna look at your your OS detection. Uh, it's gonna use OS detection, and it's also gonna give you the 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 detail for your open ports. So we're gonna do nmap, and we are going to do uh propose sv. So it's discovering your open ports. Um, this one is different than your aggressive scan earlier. What we want is we want to focus on finding some information for the software side. Um, and it's still going to scan for open ports. I think everyone is scanning and maybe it's responding a little slow. Okay. So you should be able to, oh, it's running the script now. And you don't have to do the verbose. You can just do the other one. Okay, there it is. So it looks like I'm less than a minute, right? So the services you see, we saw SSH earlier, HTTP, HPing, TCP wrapped, and the OS, it tells you that it is Linux because it found Linux kernel and open SSH is used for Ubuntu. That's the version. But let's see if it's actually a server machine or a virtual machine on a computer, right? So we're going to do the next command, which is the dash O, to really identify it. Because it tells you it's Linux. 
So we wanted to check it. So we're going to do a sudo nmap dash v dash capital O uh, and then scan me dot nmap dot org. So your target URL or IP goes last. Okay, so we got some information like before, but with the dash, with the option capital O, you're looking, you do, what it's doing is it's, there's a thing called OS interrogation. So it's really looking, it's really digging into what that operating system is, right? We suspected it's Linux earlier, but it tells you here, that it is a virtual box, potentially 95% match and 91% match is Kimu. So what can I conclude? Well, I'm suspecting that this is a Ubuntu virtual machine on a computer that's hosting scan me dot, you know, they could be renting like an AWS space and running that. Right, I'm I'm thinking it's that. Okay. But we would use other scanner to kind of match it up to see if we're getting the same result to because that's our our suspicion, right? We want to match it up. So take a screenshot. The OS guesses are displayed. It's telling you that it's a it could be virtual box, a key move. And then is there an exact match? It tells you no, right? The difficulty for this, um, for the prediction and, and you know, you don't have 100% here. And even, it even says that it doesn't have 100% match at the end. OS detection performed, right? We're almost there. We just got to do the next part, which is kind of fun. So I'm only giving you a little taste in Nmap, but you need to be really good at Nmap. It is one of those tools that's preferred by all security professional. You saw when we did the, the passive search, there are tutorial guides, videos, book, on Nmap website. They really, the, the people who created Nmap, they really want to share the knowledge and, and how you can use it. So make sure that we use it and be able to maximize our skills. Because when you listen on your, on your resume, they expect you to know it well, okay? And then if you wanted to use it in Windows, just use Nmap. Okay, last part is going to be on web app, scan. So Nikto is used for web server vulnerability scanning and web application scanning. So the first part, what we're going to do is we are going to do our help page. So Nikto, and this is already installed on Kali. Otherwise, you have to install it on other Linux, okay? We would do a help option. And this is going to give you the help page where it, you know, it shows you how you can use your option, okay? Now we're going to scan ourselves, okay? So you're going to do a Nikto. Dash H stands for host, and then the IP address of the target, which is your own server on your your virtual machine. So 10.0.2.15, which is the IP address you wrote down earlier. And you can also do a loop back there, but you know, actual IP seems more real. Yeah. H stands for host. And you can read their documentation on GitHub. 
they give you, you know, some get started information and how to use it. So the result that you see here, right, is important. It tells you this is your your target IP. This is the host name. Sometimes that could be different. Um, your target port is 80. It tells you that it's running Apache. Make sure we write down the version number because we're going to research that to see if there, there's vulnerability. And then it tells you all of these things that are web-related, anti-clicking, jacking. Uh, it's not present. So, so that would I would create a list, right? Can I do click jacking? No. Um, are there other vulnerabilities? So the it's looking for the headers. So this is not set. This is not set. So that's vulnerable. This is not set. So that's that's vulnerable. Right. And then it tells me other things like uh there are no header file, so it might leak inodes and so on. Oops. My keyboard thing is, my keyboard thing is, um, it's so close to the, I'm rerunning it again. But anyway, so take a screenshot, put down the target port, right? You saw that's 80 because it's web. And then the pa Apache version number from the result. So look at that here. Now it tells you here that do you want to submit this information to CIRT.net? For now, we're going to say no and but if you do want to, it's going to add it to the database so that way they can grow the database. So it helps other professionals, right? So the vulnerabilities are listed. I don't expect you guys to write ex everything exact. Just kind of give me, you know, some of the things that are listed there. Okay, so I was like, what is the easiest way that I can run proxy on this all in one? So we have this machine that has web services that's serving, you know, websites that has a vulnerable web app. And now we're going to have things that's going to enable, we're going to enable proxy. You guys know what proxies are? So instead of going from point A to point B, let's say that I want to go from, you know, one system to another system, what I can do is I can send it through a proxy, which is the middleman. Proxy can be used to interrogate and discover, right? So let's say that I want to mail you a package, but instead of mailing it directly to you, I wanted to send it to two, three other people first. And every time that I do that, they would the other people would look into your package, right? So what we want to do is we want to set up a proxy, and through that proxy, we're going to examine the things that are being used or requested from that, that website, okay? So in order to do that in Cali, the easiest way that I can do is we can do a poll net. So... This is a tool that we would use network address translation to see what's being communicated between the client and the web server. So like I wanted to act like a middleman and I wanted to see who's asking the server and and how, you know, what's being responded, right? So we are going to enable this and know that this is already installed on Kali so you don't have to install it, right? But we are good. This is why we chose Cali. We're going to do a start for the service and we're going to use port 8080. Oh, what? 
sorry, let's do a pseudo. So control C. Make sure you have a pseudo in the front. But you need to leave this on, okay? Don't cancel it because if you do, it stops it. So what we did was we enabled the, the, the PONAT because we want to have a way to direct communication between systems. So we're, we're basically listening in through it now. So you have to turn this on and then you're going to open up another terminal, leave this one open. You're going to open up another terminal. You can click it or you can press control alt T and you are going to open up burp suite. You might just type in burp suite, lowercase. If it's a proper command, it changes to the blue color highlight. And this is going to take a few seconds to open. When you see this, and Burp is already installed on here. You can install it on your Windows system. You, you can install it on Linux. It's great, right? So Kali has it equipped. So when you call up on it, it's going to open. You're going to click OK. And now you have another service running. Right. So what we're going to do is burp is really good. I put some information for you here. It's a good way to it's a good tool for you to. So when we say it's a suite, it's a group of tools that you can use for web application assessment. OK, it's mostly for it's all used for web, but but you can also use it just to kind of look at like the networking side of the web. So here we're going to have to accept the license. We're using the free version, so we're going to store it on the, on, on the uh, if you register your account, you can fill out the information and all of that. So we're just going to use the free version. So next, and then we're just going to start. We don't have a configuration file, so just use this, and the default selection, and click start. The people who created this definitely like to drink <laughs> or beer, right? You know that the company's name, you know what the company's name is? Swigger. <laughs> and and the application's called Burp Suite. Anyway, um, so <laughs> accept the license, click next, click start. And then now this is running, right? Did I tell you guys to configure it in here yet? Uh Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, we will not, let's see, I have a typo. We will now run Nictal for the, the, the verb suite. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have it check going through the proxy, and then we're going to see it. You might have to open the tab and then run it to kind of see it. So we'll try that now, okay? So open another terminal, and then you're going to do nictal post, and then 10.0.2.15, and you are going to do a dash use proxy. And the host, this is where the web server lives. So if you have a web server URL, that's where you're going to put. But since we are hosting ourselves, so we're going to do HTTP and localhost is going to plug in your loopback address and the port for our proxy. So we're scanning that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to burp here and you're going to click on proxy. Make sure that your interception is off. It is off. Click on HTTP history, and there you go. You can see all. So from here on out, 
everything that's being serviced by this web server, I can see it on Burp. That means that you are intercepting or you are, you know, putting the camera in the middle and you're seeing what's being requested or not. You can also interrogate the cookies and all the things like that. That's mm -hmm. down the line. <laughs> so you know the HTTP when it's a get is it's a client request. So when someone is, you know, putting in that URL, for example, right? Uh, local host, it's going to show that. And then the cool thing about this is that it also shows everything else that's related to the web traffic. Cool, cool, right? Even the error, 404 not found. So what did we learn today? We learned how to do passive put pinning active footprinting using nmap and its options we learn how to set up target right we learn how to set up a web server a run a vulnerable web app use it for the scans we also learn how to use nicto we we learn how to activate it burp sweep in cali and use it to monitor the proxy Okay, any question? So put down what you've learned. And then with that, how can you apply it to cybersecurity? If you aspire to be an ethical hacker, right? This is your first initial step. Even if you're you're going to be a security analyst, likely one point or another, you are going to have to use some kind of tools for footprinting and fingerprinting. You say, I want to make a lot of money becoming an ethical hacker. So, yeah, this tool is going to be useful. This concept is going to be useful for me. Right? Or, so this is just a little taste. Now, I encourage you to examine more. You already know how to set it up. So you can do it at home or on, on your laptop or whatnot. You already know how to access the tool or even download and install some of the tools. And many of these are also available in API. So you can in integrate it into a Python script and have it all automated. You know how there's a process that I have to do earlier, like I have to turn, I have to Activate burp and then I gotta do all of that. You can automate all of that, all of that. Right. Or you can have everything ready in a virtual machine. You fire it up and then everything is already ready to go. Okay. So let me stop recording.